and welcome everyone to CBC Comics, the weekly comic book show for the channel of Comic Book Cast 2. You can Google us just by Googling exactly that, Comic Book Cast. You'll find everything, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Twitch, where this is currently being streamed live. Uh, if you want to check it out live, there's Mondays, Wednesdays and Thursdays are the primary days that I, I do myself and Wednesdays is everyone else. Um, there will be some more things on the Tuesday and the Thursday eventually, but that's that's a conversation for a different day. Uh, yeah, you'll find us Spotify, YouTube, SoundCloud, everything. Wherever you want to listen to it, iTunes, we're there somewhere. Uh, yeah, as always, you can follow me. I am Mitch. You can Twitter Mitch692. I said that back to front, but who who honestly cares? I don't. Uh, yeah, there's actually some eh, some decent news. I've got some decent comments as well this week, so... Let's just start it off with, if you like secret histories, um, it's a good thing because Marvel has another one, you know, not only are we going to get the, the Marvel history by Mark Wade soon, there seem to be retconning, cap I don't know if, I suppose it's a retcon in it really, retcon means adding stuff and changing stuff, the past, it's, it's, it's a retcon, let's just say it's a retcon, but yeah, um, the Weapon Plus program, there's a secret history with that. It's going to explore the connections between Wolverine and Cap. Because obviously Cap was the first Weapon Plus super soldier. And then Wolverine was the 10th. Hence why it's the X. And was it Deadpool was the 11th? No, I can't remember who the other nine were. Uh, either way, it's, it is irrelevant to really... But yeah, uh, written by Ethan Sachs and art by, I'm only going to shorten the name here, uh, Dio Neves. Don't, I don't think I've heard of Dio Neves. If I have, I'm sorry. I can't remember the name. Can't remember the art style either. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a one shot. So it's not exactly going to be a series, but it's coming out in July anyways. A lot of stuff on Marvel in July. Uh, but yeah, what does it say? Where's, it, where's, where's the... Uh... The, citation. the secret history behind their origins revealed. In 1940, scientists attempted to make a man in the perfect weapon a super soldier. They failed and made him a legend instead. Before the turn of the century, they tried again for the tenth time. They failed, making a man into Death Incarnate, Wolverine. At long last, Ethan Sachs, Old Man Hawkeye, Galaxy's Edge, uh, Dio Neves, Green Arrow, Deathstroke, uh, reveals the shadowy connections between Captain America, Wolverine, and many more of the Marvel Universe's super soldiers, including some surprises. The conspiracy begins here. So yeah, 40 page one shot. It's a cool idea. I wonder whether they're actually going to go with it in the long run or if it's just going to be completely ignored. But right now it kind of feels like, a, hey, Wolverine is back. We haven't really done anything with the Wolverine or made a bigger deal about it. No. Let's just have something to do with Wolverine again. No. Cause we've got Blade and Wolverine. We've got Hulk Wolverines. Now you've got Captain America and Wolverines. No. You've got Infinity Watch. It's got Wolverine in it. Um, Wolverine was in a... Oh, what was he in recently? War of the Realms, he's in that. Um, he was in event. Was he in Avengers recently? I can't remember. Or am I confusing War of the Realms with Avengers? I think I'm confusing War of the Realms. But yeah, I mean it's cool. I'm, I'll check it out. It's only a one shot, so you can't. You ain't got really much to lose. So, yeah. um, next up, always a fun one. Always a fun one. Uh, Doomsday Clock has been delayed again. Um. It's uh, April 18th. It was announced that uh, May 22nd is the soonest. It's no longer like solicited for that date. It's just, oh yeah, this, that's the soonest it's going to come out. Um, so yeah, this is the fifth week in a row that Doomsday Clock has been pushed back, or number 10 has been pushed back. Um, it's just no one's surprised, let's be honest. Um, but it's, you know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 would you, what would you say about it? You know, it's it's it's, it's Jeff Johns. At, at this point, there's too much pointing towards Jeff Johns being the reason why it's delayed. You know, because not only is Shazam delayed, like the comic Johns is writing, uh, Stargirl recently for DC Universe got pushed back to 2020. You know, there's one consistent theme of all these things, and it's Johns. So, 
And as chat rightly states, take a shot. Every time you see this, take a shot. Kill your liver that little bit more. So, I don't know. It, this book doesn't matter. Uh, I'll keep talking about delays because obviously people like it, but the, the book as a whole, it, it, it's irrelevant. It, it's lost all meaning. It's lost all importance. And the Justice League issue that I'm going to talk about today, you know, it's just the proof in the pudding, really. Like, that there's no reason for this book to exist. I'll be interested to see actually what Johns does with this. Because obviously they hinted that, that the blue hand and the universe of DC, like, you know, the creator's hand that it was Dr. Manhattan. Eh, not so much anymore. Not so much. So, you know, if, if I was, um, if I was a gossiping man, I would say that, you know, Maybe people don't like Jeff Jones at DC, but I ain't gonna say that. You know, I'm not that sort of person. To be like, oh, they're contradicting. Clearly, they don't like him. Like, that's just silly, isn't it? Like, you know, maybe they, to be fair, they might not like him. You know, you haven't got to like everyone, but it is what it is. It's it's definitely Jones at this point. You you, you don't have three massive projects get delayed, and you be the only connecting dot between all three. So, it's. It's, it's what it is. Excuse me, I'm taking a drink. But yeah, it's... So, you can take your bets on next week if I'm going to be talking about this. And have another week delay to like, June. But, hopefully not. Hopefully not. You know, it's got to the point now where new sites aren't even actually making different articles. They're just updating the same one. Which, in today's climate of clickbait, it's kind of surprising because, you know, as I'm doing here, I'm just going to say in every video it's been delayed again. But, you know, what can you do? What can you do? No, if I, does anyone actually care about this chat? No. Does anyone really care about Doomsday Clock anymore? You know, it's, this just kind of exists. I think the only reason I'm actually even hanging on to this book is just to see how it ends. And just to see how much like Snyder contradicts Doomsday Clock with his Justice League, because you know he, he's already like twisted the knife. Like this book, probably, you know, I question if this is just in canon anymore. Like, is is this actually part of DC? But I suppose it's rebirth. It kind of has to be. But uh, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, moving on. Uh, last week I talked about a reveal marvel did for acts of evil uh on that you can go back and listen to it and speculate that's probably going to be like a spiritual successor to uh, acts of vengeance which was like um oh when was it? i think it's an 89 not really a crossover but it was like an 89 series where villains came together in the marvel universe and they split off to attack different heroes so you like they you know if they hadn't fought that villain before then they went, you know, they got attacked by that villain. Um, I was kind of like, bang on the money. Acts of Evil is exactly that for a, like, for a new generation, I suppose. A new bunch of readers. Um, the only thing is, and I'm kind of grateful for, is it's going to be in the annuals. It's not exactly like it's a massive crossover. So, when is it going to be? 30th anniversary. Oh, it was 89.90. I was right. Huh. Uh, is this June or July? I can't remember. It's not telling me. Oh no, it's October. Huh. October 28th? No. Huh? Oh no. One of them is billed as Venom, An Venom Annual 1, despite Venom Annual 1 coming out in October 2018. So, you know, we're back to your whole... Um, squiffy numbering again lucky to say for that one um, I can't see a date for this I assume it's got to be whatever the recent station was was it June oh no August and September that's when they're going to be so yeah annuals of certain heroes they're going to go up against uh, people they haven't fought before I think the ones revealed so far are Miss Marvel and Super Scroll uh, there's Punisher, and is that the Brood? 
I think it's the brood. Yeah, yeah, it's the brood. So Prime's in the brood. And who's that? Spider Man? I don't know who that is. I can't Oh, Lady Hellbender, yeah. Oh, it's Venom versus Lady Hellbender. There you go, yeah. And yeah, it's Punisher versus the Brood Queen. And they're literally right there in text staring at me. I apologise for being an idiot. So yeah, it's it's cool. It's a cool little fun little crossover. It's nice that they're actually going to be in the annuals and not taking over the series. So that's how that is. Uh, next up, probably the biggest bit of news is, is going to be headlining the show. Uh, Jane Foster is going to be back as Valkyrie. It was announced last week. Because uh, obviously War of the Realms issue 2 came out and some things happened in the end of that book that kind of point towards this. Um, I I think everyone and their mother called this one, to be honest. You know, Jane Foster was way too big. You know, people can cry. People can cry about it all, all over no, Cry about her all they want. You know, it's, she was huge. She sold like more books than Thor did. So she was always going to come back. You know, Aaron even wrote it in one of the issues after the death of the mighty Thor in quotes that you know her story is not done yet and it's clearly not and she's coming back as the Valkyrie because some things might have happened but um yeah when do we when's the release date for this do we have a date I assume it's got to be after War of the Realms um oh it's July yeah Jane, Jane Foster Valkyrie number one is due out in July so yeah it's um it's Jason Aaron and Al Ewing. I think it's probably going to be more Al Ewing writing it. No, Jason Aaron is probably just going to be like um, keeping continuity in check with everything. I'm not sure, unless it's the other way around. I, I don't know. Or it, it might not even be that way. But yeah, um, who are you doing? Who's doing the right, not the right in the art on this book? Um, Cafu. Because we have had some pages revealed and. If you know that artist, then the, the book's going to be stunning. It's going to be absolutely insane. I'm not sure what they've done before. They've obviously done some stuff, but I'm not sure. So yeah, if you like Jane Foster and you wanted Jane Foster back, you've got Jane Foster back. You haven't got Jane Thor back, but you have Jane Valkyrie back. And a little quote they pulled from the first issue, Thor was a god. Well, Thor is a god, Valkyrie's a job. Which... Yeah, probably couldn't get anything more true than that. Like Valkyrie is, you know, that's one hell of a job to have, you know, ushering the dead. It'd be interesting how they play it, though, because Valkyrie usually, you know, they, they have to possess a body or something. They, they haven't really got, like, a physical form. They have to possess, like, a human to then have that form. So, I'm, I'll, I'll speculate on it a little bit when I get to War of the Realms, but mm, I have an idea. I have an idea. But anyway, speaking of, you know, speculating on comics, uh, to transition into what I've read last week, because unlike last week, I actually read stuff. Uh, Tony Stark, Iron Man number 10. Uh, Dan Slot's insisting on hurting me. Very, you know, he, I say I put all the blame on Dan Slot's also gyms up. Um, yeah, it's not even, I can't say it's the conclusion to this arc, because this arc still seems to be ongoing. Uh, it's 10 issues and it's, you know, typical slot fashion. Arcs never end. Not that i got a problem because I'm enjoying this arc, but it's just it's just going on and on. But, um, yeah, it's at least Motherboard, the, the main central hub of the Escape that Tony made, has uh, been defeated, or at least it seems to be defeated. Um, Tony's apparently not in the best way. Um, they seem to be in like a virtual limbo with Aaron. Is it Aaron Sachs, Machine Man? I can never remember his second name. I'm certain it's Aaron. I don't, I don't know why I want to say Sachs. I'm pretty certain it's Aaron Sachs. Could be wildly off base with that one. But yeah, he's, there's a, he's in a tricky spot right now. Not, not to give too many spoilers out. There's a, there's a fantastic Evangelion, like Neon Genesis reference in this. And it's like, as a Neon Genesis nut, you know, it's... Is, I, I I appreciate that nod. So, well done, well done to the creative team on that one. But, um, but yeah, it's very, very black mirrory. Like before the series came out, Slot said it was going to be kind of like a black mirrory sort of thing, and it's, he's held up to that promise. He can't take it away from him. 
but yeah, it's it's an interesting spot. They're, they're taking this in a very interesting direction, and I'm not a hundred percent sure what that direction is. I think you might be going a bit. I don't think anime is the right word, but it might. It it could end up being the right word for it. Like very. I don't know. It, it doesn't feel like a normal Iron Man comic. It feels like a completely different beast. But we'll see. The, the next, the, the cover for issue eleven's interesting. It's really interesting. I might have to get that one physically. But no, if you're not reading the series, go go check it out. It's highly recommended. It's, it's one of the best Iron Man runs in years. No, the last one we had was the start. Oh, I just think it was. Oh, it's not Matt Fraction. Was it Fraction? I think it might be Matt Fraction around the start of this decade or well, that ended around like 2012 really good run but you know hasn't really been a great one since and this one's shaping up to be a great one but uh next up is guardians of the galaxy number four uh craps popping off you know we, we've gamora finally shows up in the series uh you know she, she's kind of back to being like the deadliest woman in the galaxy again um there's a thing going on with rocket rocket's apparently done something that everyone's pissed off at him about. We don't know what that is, but he seems to like he's barricaded himself in a little mini fortress on Half World, which if you don't know, Half World is where he comes from. So interesting to see where Kate takes that. Um, but yes, yeah, I I really have no idea where they're going with this. And of course, like Gamora throws out the whole angle of like Thanos is playing everyone, like because why wouldn't he? You know. How can anyone really be sure he's trying to get a new buddy? No, you know, someone that, no, some, no, someone like Thanos' mentality would probably take, you know, a bit entertaining watching people scramble and kill each other just to find a new Thanos. But well, as we knew from the last issue, Richard Ryder's bringing like, the Dark Guardians, as I think they're calling themselves now, right to the Guardians. So. We're gonna get. We got a bit of a fight, you know. Yet again, spoilers. Uh, it looks like they're gonna kill Quill off. I don't think they're gonna kill Peter Quill off personally, but we'll see. We'll see. Oh, it's Aaron Stack. Thank. You. I knew it was something like that. I knew it was something. So yeah. So it's. I don't. I, I can't see. I know it's Donny Cates and the man kills off fucking anyone. But I, I honestly can't see him killing off Quill. You, you can't get rid of Quill. Not now. Not right now. But, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. To be fair, there's Hella involved in this series as well. And I think Hella's in the next issue. I'm pretty certain she's in the next issue. So, you know, maybe there's something going on there. We'll, we'll find out. But um, to actually pay off something I was alluding to earlier... Uh, Justice League 22, this is another Legion of Doom episode, uh, issue, even not episode. Um, this is essentially the origin story of the universe, very much in vain, like Al Ewan's Ultimates, with the first firmament, kind of. Uh, you get a little backstory in Perpetua, and like the World Forger, the Monitor, and the Anti-Monitor, and like, how their jobs came to be, and why, you know, you, you get a nice little history in like, the why crisis, or crisis sees, or crisis eyes. Whatever you have, the plural of crisis is, because crisis doesn't sound right. But um, you, you get like a little origin of why they happen, and it's all because of Perpetua, and like the monitors. Um, what was it? You know, that the monitor actually conspired is the word I was looking for against Perpetua because he knew she was up to no good. Because thank God someone did, but no. In this, there's the hand, the blue hand, at the. Uh, oh, is it the middle of the universe? I, th I want to say it's in the middle of the universe, but you know, it's very heavily implied that she. Well, I say implied. It, it it says she's the one, so it's not Manhattan that made the universe. So, eh, no, I don't know. For something that should have connected and caught up with Doomsday Clock months ago. They don't really seem to be paying attention, but it's, it's what it is. It's it's a cool, it, like, just ignoring all that aside, because it's kind of whack, like, who, who cares? Like, it's Doomsday Clock. 
but you no. Know, Snyder does a good job here. It's actually quite interesting reading it. You no, know, give me cosmic, give me big giant cosmic beings that can't physically exist. Um, you find out Barbatos is actually made from what uh, the world is it the world forger or the monitor that makes him? Who makes him? Uh, it's the yeah the world forger yeah world forger makes Barbatos. So if you didn't read Dark Knight's Metal, you won't know who Barbatos is. Or Barbatos, however you pronounce that name, I say Barbatos. But yeah, so that that it's a nice little time to that because obviously it's a Zack Snyder thing, and he's not going to let metal go. That's going to come back clearly. But it's it's a good issue. It's a really cool issue. You find out why she's trapped behind the source wall, and like how you know, what the source wall means and all that sort of stuff. It's it's a cool issue. It's a cool issue. But um, oh, hold on a minute. I'm oh, goofed. But my next one. Is going to be what's it? War of the Realms issue two. Kind of alluded to it earlier. I'm just going to jump straight to the spoilers. Spoilers: Valkyrie dies. Valkyrie gets stabbed in the back. Um, so the entire issue, it's you know, is a bit of a focus on Jane, and you can kind of sense that something big is going to happen with Jane. Um, for the most part, everything's gone to pot. Like they can't even evacuate. Like the Avengers can't evacuate people properly. Like they end up evacuating themselves by mistake. And they all end up at back at the Avengers Tower, not Avengers Tower, Avengers Mountain, because that's that's a thing now. But it's a good issue. It's, it's the series off to a great start. No, it's no. That's I suppose the thing with events. They always start off good and kind of like. But I, I have faith in Jason Aaron. Oh yeah, again, Valkyrie stabbed through the back by Malekith. Um, I'm purely going to assume that the physical body of Valkyrie has died, and her form will go into Jane, or her like her essence. Maybe not essence. That's probably not the right word. But you know, you know what I mean. Like the spirit of Valkyrie is probably the better word. We're going to Jane. That's how she'll become Valkyrie. But you know, some people are mad at it because it's like swapping an LGBT character for a, a straight white character. But you know, it's. I don't think it's necessarily Valkyrie. That's, I think it's by. Is that what she's supposed to be? I'm not. I'm, my Valkyrie knowledge is like one out of twenty. So I, I can understand people being mad about it, but it's it's not something that I picked up on straight away, or even kind of. Like, you know, it's what it is. You know, it gets to a point where you got to kind of like let creators actually tell a story that they have and not limit everything just because you don't like it, you know. But that's a different conversation for a different day. But I'm excited if you see where this goes. You know, Malekith is like... If you read the Thor issue last week, there's a nice little origin story for Malekith. Now, it's all... Like, it's kind of part of Loki's after-death like story, because obviously, spoilers, he got eaten by Laufey last issue for War of the Realms. So he's kind of seen himself and his future self and his... It's a cool issue. It's kind of... If you want a sense of what um, the Loki Disney Plus show is going to be, read last week's issue of Thor. You're probably more than likely going to get something like that. Maybe not exactly like that. It's going to be something like that. Um, but moving on to my last one. Uh, Avengers No Road Home issue 10 this is the last issue of the series um, I said, I think I said it last week I said it again I kind of miss having the 6 issues like the pacing was a lot better on this one but I kind of wanted more of it I don't know I think maybe 12 might be a sweet spot for these sort of weekly weekly runs I'm not 100% sure but it's it ended in a way I didn't expect. And I don't think a lot of people expected. Very, um... It took a very meta twist. Like, the whole house that, um... Nicks were seeing was actually Marvel. Like, they, they literally label it the House of Ideas. It's creation itself. It, it's literally Marvel HQ in New York. Like, uh, it's... It's a weird one. But, um... Like, and it kind of ends in a... <sighs> It's a weird way to like have the end fight. No, it's not a bad way to end it. It's, it's, 
it's I, I love the way it ended to be honest but it's, it's a very weird way a very like conceptual way it's like you know it's just literally Vision and Nyx in an empty white space and it's like Vision's like oh you know darkness is the end of everything but this is light this is the start and the creation of everything and then he just creates everything and it's like here's every character in existence and let me just turn into the Jim Hammond human torch for a minute because I don't know why but Vision seemingly fixed. Um, there is a there is kind of new status quos for a couple of characters. Like Monica's de like depowered. She has a slight nerve. She's no longer just like pure light. She is a person with limits. Um, I'm not sure if that's. I'm I'm pretty certain it's because um, the whole euphoria issue, where they kind of told her what they want, and like they kind of obviously got what they wanted, but. That's that. Um, it's kind of hinted that that maybe Vision and Scarlet Witch will get back together again. Maybe it's it's kind of heavily implied as a little little thing there. Um, the biggest thing though, I'm trying to find a page, trying to find this page is um, not the Eternals, but the Olympians and Hercules and what happens with them, because Hercules is seemingly off in space. He's and he's got a redesign. You've probably seen it online already. Um, it's a very Jack Kirby esque redesign. Um, I don't know if I'm just trying to literally will this thing into existence, but it, it, he looks kind of Eternals y to me personally. Um, like, if you know, if Jack Kirby was to make something now, this is what he'd look like. That's just the impression I get. And there's, a ver there's a lot of elements, a lot of elements. Um, the Pantheon's back, like Zeus and everyone. Uh, there's a new location called the Space, in a space beyond space, which, you know, beyond space is like an actual place in Marvel. There's like a garden beyond space. There's a desert beyond space. I, I never knew there was a space beyond space. I think this is a new thing. But it's it seems to be cherry-picking from Earth-X because the Earth-X Olympians lived in their own little pocket dimension and they, interestingly enough, actually, they were essentially Eternals. Like, they were Eternals that were so old, they'd gone through their three stages of celestial mutation, which mean, you know, they, their powers are what people perceive them as. So, which is it's a, it's a weird concept, and that's a very confusing thing to say. But, you know, the reason why they're gods is because people worship them as gods, so that's what they look like. They, you know, they look like gods. You know, people think, oh, this god has the power of lightning, he's always like Zeus, he's going to look like Zeus and have lightning powers. That's the third, like, mutation stage of Celestials, so, funny little fact there, yeah. So, I don't know if they're cherry-picking from that, it looks like they are, I could be very wrong, uh, but this is a year from now, I believe. Or there, there's something, there's some part of this that's a year from now, so, I, I wonder if next year's, like, Avengers something no something 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 or something no something or no something something no whatever it's going to be it's going to be no in there anyway you know whatever that's going to be like if it's i imagine it's going to deal with that challenger from the last one like the old grandmasters escaped so no doubt he's going to come back somewhere but Conan, not, is it? Yeah, Conan. He's also in the Savage Land now, so that's how he's going to be part of the Savage Avengers and all that. So it's, it sets up a nice little status quo change. But I, I'm holding out on them making the Olympians Eternals. It looks, it looks too much like it. It's there's too much stuff pointing toward it, towards it. I mean, you know, no smoke with that fire. But um, if you didn't read No Road Home, go check it out. Fantastic. Like fantastic series. If you haven't read No Surrender, go back and read No Surrender. Also fantastic series. But yeah, but with that, it's going to bring an end to this week's show. So thanks everyone for watching, wherever you're watching or listening. Oh, you're more like listening because this isn't the video thing. So yeah, uh, we will be back on Wednesday. We didn't have a show last week because Army was going to anime in Boston. So yeah, uh, we'll be back then. So bye.